I've always been a Ray. I mean, I've been here since the beginning, and, and now to be in the Bay Leagues with the Rays, it's like a dream come true. It's, it's pretty awesome. From rookie level in Princeton, West Virginia, to Triple A ball in Durham, North Carolina, Charlie Montoya spent 18 years managing at every level in Tampa Bay's minor league system. Then, in December of 2014, the former Expos infielder finally returned to the big leagues, joining the Rays as their third base coach. Having someone like Charlie, who knows everyone, who gets along with everyone, and understands our philosophies and culture, made so much sense. The winningest manager in Durham Bulls history, Montoyo's success on the baseball field is strengthened by perspective he gained through his son Alex's medical battles. You know, bases loaded and two outs and that's nothing compared to what I've gone through. So it was easy for me to manage and knowing that it could be worse. This is Inside the Rays, Charlie Montoyo. Uh, we're gonna go on contact. Do it! Do it! Go! Unbelievable. His numbers that he's put up in his managing career is is unbelievable. And playing for him was so much fun. I'm real excited to have him at third base. Charlie is a, a career Ray. Uh, he's been a part of our organization since 1997 and he's done everything this organization has asked of him. Done a great job managing clubs and uh, you know, for, for guys like him, being a big league coach is part of the progression and, and part of the dream and it was great to have that opportunity to bring him up to the staff. He's a veteran presence, someone who has a lot of energy and someone who knows our players and, and has been integral to our culture for so long. Charlie Montoyo's baseball journey began in Puerto Rico where he grew up in this small town of Florida. You know, my dad played baseball. He was actually a good baseball player, but he, was, he wasn't that big. He was like 5'4", so that's why I couldn't make it to the pros. When I was a kid, the first thing I got for Three Kings Day, because that's what we used to get instead of Santa Claus, we used to get presents in Three Kings Day. So uh, I got a glove and, and a pitch pack, and that's how I kind of learned to how to play the game. And from Little League on, uh, I just liked the game, and. Players like Felix Millan, Roberto Clemente, all those guys I used to watch on TV and, and in my house that's all we did, watch baseball. And so I loved it from since I was a kid, five years old. Montoyo's best option to continue playing baseball was in the United States. But to get there, he needs some help. When I was 18 years old, I met this guy named Don Otterman and God bless him because his dream was to bring kids from Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic to the States and give them an education and then maybe sign professional baseball after that. Guys like Moses Alou, Batista from the Blue Jays and, and then me. Since Charlie didn't speak English, he couldn't go straight to a university. Otterman secured Montoyo a scholarship to De Anza College near San Jose, California, where he could improve his game and his English. I remember the coach picking me up and had no idea what he was telling me. So, but one way to learn a language was they put me with an American family and that's how I learned little by little. And then I transferred to Louisiana Tech when I was, I was thinking I was learning the language, then I went to Louisiana, that's a different language over there. Dave Obenauer, that was a great family that, that took care of me and then when I went to Louisiana Tech, Pat Patterson, the head coach there, he, he was outstanding. He helped me out a lot, and, and, and that's another guy that I want to thank very much. Montoyo played three seasons at Louisiana Tech, earning second team All-America honors as a senior, and signing with the Milwaukee Brewers, who selected him in the sixth round of the 1987 MLB Draft. He would spend six seasons playing for the Brewers minor league affiliates in Helena, Beloit, Stockton, El Paso, and Denver. It is a grind. It is a grind. And I remember in 1992, I was having a good year with the Brewers. And I remember, I believe I had like 300, 324 or something. And, and I think I called up. So I remember telling my mom, well, I don't know what else I can do. But then I talked to my, my coach, Tony Muser, and said, is there any way we can, I can get traded or something? Because I don't think I have a chance with you guys. 
and the following, uh, that winter I got traded to the Expos. It was with the Expos that Montoya would get a taste of the big leagues. In September, we were in the playoffs and first game of the playoffs, I wasn't playing. Mike Quaddy was the manager and I remember him calling me at two in the afternoon and he said, do you want to play today? And I go, yeah, I don't know why I didn't play yesterday. So he goes, yeah, well, you're going to go play with the Expos. So I rented a car from Ottawa. I drove to Montreal. I got lost. They spoke French where I stopped. So I got to the ballpark at 7 o'clock, 7-10 game. I sat in the dugout. I said hello to people. And then in the eighth inning, in the bottom of the eighth, Felipe Lu comes to me. If they bring the lefty, you're going to go hit. You're gonna pinch it. I pinch it, and my first at bat, I get the game winner RBI. After the game, that's when I call my mom. But they already saw it on ESPN, the RBI base hit. I didn't call anybody. I called a rental company so I can get a car and drive to Montreal. It was funny. <laughs> I ended up going two for five with three RBIs in, in the big league. So I was the last guy to hit 400. <laughs> Coming up on Inside the Rays. I always wanted to be a leader, and, and I always wanted to manage, so when that job came open, it was like a dream come true. In 1995, Charlie Montoya was playing for the Triple-A Scranton-Wilkes-Barre Red Barons. In a game versus Ottawa, Montoya hit a home run that turned the head of Lynx shortstop Tom Foley. A friendship was formed that would last for decades and help chart Montoya's baseball career. In the spring of 1996, the 30-year-old Montoya knew his playing career was drawing to a close. And when he saw Foley, newly hired as the expansion Devil Rays field coordinator, he took a chance. I said, Tom, uh, I'm thinking this is going to be my last year playing, so I know you're the farm director for the new team, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, so you know, think of me in October you know, if you have a spot open or something. And that's how it happened. In October, he called me and he offered me the Princeton, West Virginia job to manage. When I was playing, I was kind of like one of those guys, the leaders on the team. I always wanted to be a leader and, and I always wanted to manage. So when that job came open, it was like a dream come true, you know, and I thank Foley very much for giving me that opportunity. After managing at rookie level in West Virginia, in 1998, Montoya moved to the Rays short season team in Hudson Valley, New York. Then it was on to the single-A Charleston River Dogs. I went to Charleston two years in a row, uh, and I thank God for that because the second year is when I met my wife, Samantha. So I saw her in, in my first year there. I said, okay, I don't mind coming back here. So, and I did, and, and that's how we met. I worked for the team there. So I had met him the year before as the manager, but I had a boyfriend at the time, and then when he came back, we were doing the media thing in the suites. And I remember having to hold the microphone for the Channel 4 guy, and my arm was like dying the whole time. And he was by the door and just staring. And I was like, oh, why is he staring at me? <laughs> and then a couple of weeks later, he was like, hey, do you want to go get a drink? And I was like, all right, maybe. <laughs> a courtship ensued, and soon Charlie was inviting Samantha to join him on his baseball journey. I wanted to make sure she knew she was the one that I wanted and that was big because in baseball as you know it's not easy when you leave and you can leave the place for a long time and I got the ring and right before I left for spring training I proposed to her. Next stop, two years with the Bakersfield Blaze. I was a manager and clubhouse guy in Bakersfield. So I did, uh, Marty Demerit used to clean and I used to go buy stuff for, for the players and stuff. So I did them both. I did the clubhouse and, and, and managed. And then I went to Orlando and then I moved my family here because I figured well, I'd be in Orlando for a couple of years and then they moved to Montgomery. Montoya spent three seasons with the AA Biscuits, culminating in a Southern League Championship in 2006. They were a good team made better with the late season addition of Rays drafty Evan Longoria. He was having a good year, you know, he moved up pretty quick. I guess he started in Hudson Valley, then he went to the California League, and then he came to, to Montgomery, I believe in August, and 
And then he got us going from there. And, you know, the pitching staff was pretty good, too. It was Neiman, uh, Andy Sonnenstein. So it, it, was a, it was a good team. It was fun. In 2007, many of those Biscuit stars moved up to AAA. And so did Charlie, as manager of the iconic Durham Bulls. In spring training, Pete, he was a ground crew guy, and I remember when I got to AAA, he told me, oh, you made it to field one, because I went from field five, field four, field three, field two, you know, single A, double A. The toughest thing about the mound is telling a kid that he's getting released. That, that was the toughest job, but then I got to AAA, and I got the best job in the game, was telling kids, it's your dream, you're going to the big league. Every time I did it, I tried to do it in a different way. You know, like I remember one time, Riefenhaus, and my family was with me, so I put my family in the speakerphone and I said, congratulations, Reef, this is the Montoya family, you're going to the big league. So I always did it a different way, so that's just one way I did it. Because I know it's so special for the guys to go to the big leagues for the first time. The one thing that I'm proud of that I did in my years in, in Durham is not so much the winning, it's giving guys a chance to play. Like nobody in my team went two days without playing because everybody's dream is to get to the big leagues and the only way you can get to the big leagues is if you get a chance to play. So my main goal was to give everybody a chance to play and I thank Mitch Lukevic for letting me do that. Durham's a great place and I was very lucky to be there for eight years. Next on Inside the Rays. You know, bases loaded and two outs and that's nothing compared to what I've gone through, so it was easy for me to manage and knowing that it could be worse. In his first season as manager of the Rays AAA affiliate in Durham, Charlie Montoyo led the Bulls to an 80-63 record, a successful start for certain. After the season ended, the Montoyos had less than a month to wait for the arrival of their second child, Alex, who was born on October 17, 2007, Charlie's 42nd birthday. Alex was born, and he was born pretty quick. You took Tyson to lunch, I think. and. Um, because someone's not so good in the hospital room, which is fine. So my mom was there, and um, it was it was quick. And then we, I called them like, "Hey, you can come back. The baby's here." And then they took him to the nursery to, you know, they do the little test and everything. And they took him to the nursery, and they didn't bring him back ever. They um, came in and said, "We're putting your baby in an oxygen tent, and we've called a cardiologist." And that was sort of it. Like there was no like anything. It was sort of just like. Bup, bup, bup. And then about an hour later, they said, yeah, we're putting him on a helicopter and we're airlifting him to Phoenix. We had to wait for her to be discharged because she wanted to leave, but that's one thing about the insurance companies. If, if she would have left... They won't pay for it. So I had to get the doctor to discharge me about, what, four hours after having a baby? Yeah. Yeah. And then we drove to... We drove to Phoenix. To Phoenix, yeah. I went 45 minutes or something. Alex was born with Epstein's anomaly, a rare heart defect involving the right side of the heart and affecting an estimated 1 in 20,000 children. The tricuspid valve, the valve that divides the right chamber of the heart, doesn't form properly. Blood can leak back in the wrong direction and blood flow can be obstructed. The first day we were in Phoenix, they put a balloon through his heart to help blood flow. And then when he was like five days old, they did his first open heart surgery. Well, the one thing about it is like, I've never wanted to miss one day of baseball. So that's why we plan our kid to have him in the off season. And thank God we did, because then I was home, I was off. So again, we were in Phoenix for a month and then they told us there's nothing else we can do for your kid. He might need a transplant. They, he was on a ventilator and he, they could not get him off the ventilator. They couldn't figure out why. So they thought he might need a transplant. So they put him on the little hospital plane, the very scary hospital plane, and flew him to Los Angeles. Alex survived the transport to the UCLA Medical Center, but his medical journey was just beginning. The severity of his condition required not only a feeding tube, but surgery to place a tube in his stomach, a helmet to keep him from developing a flat head, and three more open heart surgeries. 
the last occurring in 2012. Alex's Epstein's anomaly, they said is the most extreme case they've ever seen in a kid that's alive. So his valve is completely non-functional. One of his ventricles looks, your heart's a smooth muscle, it looks like a sea sponge kind of. So in one of the surgeries, they basically blocked off one of his ventricles completely, so it's shriveled up, it doesn't even exist anymore. And they've used Gore-Tex tubing and have rerouted his circulatory system. So he doesn't even use the right side of his heart anymore. Coupled with Charlie and Samantha's anxiety about Alex's condition was the added stress of mounting medical bills. Yeah, that was the toughest one at the beginning. We didn't know yeah. what to do because all the bills and, you know, going from, from Phoenix to, to L.A., as you guys know, it's pretty expensive there in, the, in that area. So we got a lot of help from a lot of people, a lot of baseball people, and, and we couldn't do it without them. The biscuits and the bowls both had a fund. They set up a, a fund, and it was great. I mean, people donated, you know, even just $5, and that, you know, helped. Just because we went to L.A., our mortgage didn't stop. So we had to rent an apartment in L.A. and paid for that, and it's, you know, supplemented the, all the extra therapy he's had over the years, so it's been great. Through it all, Charlie kept managing in Durham. Alex wasn't allowed to fly for two years, so Charlie would fly home on off days to see his family, sometimes for just 18 hours. In his absence, Alex's older brother, Tyson, forged a protective bond with his brother. It was hard. Our older son, Tyson, had to grow up a lot faster because he was five. And all of a sudden, he became 30. You know, mommy, Alex pulled his feeding tube out. And I'd be like, he did? He's like, yeah, I put it back in. I'm like, you're not supposed to know how to do this. I go, and I would check and it would be right. <laughs> he definitely like had to grow up a lot faster because he had a little brother that needed a lot of care. With Charlie and Durham, the Bulls kept winning earning the 2009 Governor's Cup in the AAA National Championship. The wins were great, but it was his son's battle that gave Montoyo a unique perspective on the game. Baseball became easy for me because, you know, bases loaded and two outs and that's nothing compared to what I've gone through. So it was easy for me to manage and knowing that it could be worse. Uh, I became a better man and better manager and and my job, I wasn't worried about getting to the big leagues. My job was to provide for my family having insurance. And of course, Alex survived and is doing well right now, so that made it easier. Today, Alex continues to do well. He has a bright smile, an easy laugh, and a deep love for the game that his dad coaches. He loves the game. He, he knows everybody's numbers. He knows his stats. Like when. When Trout went deep the other day, oh, he just tied pool holes with 16 home runs. He knows everything. He watches baseball all the time. And, and so uh, every ballpark I go to, uh, I take a video of the whole stadium and, and I send it to him. There you go, Alex. You made it to Fenway Park. It's old, but there's a lot of history here. Here's the Green Monster. Today, if, if, if he doesn't come with me, he told me to take a picture of the lineup that's in front of the door to make sure because he wants to know who's playing and stuff. So yeah, he loved the game. Just looking at him, you know, if, he's always smiling and stuff. So that reminds you, okay, it could be worse. He's doing great. So, you know, thank God. Coming up on Inside the Rays. It's awesome to see that all that time that he spent in the minor leagues winning and, and managing the way he's managed, it's kind of paid off. As a player, my goal was to get to the big leagues. As a manager, I've seen a lot of guys that are always looking to get ahead and they forget the job at hand, I didn't want to be that guy. I want to do my job. If I get promoted, great. If I don't, then I just got to keep working and, and help the kids because it's all about the kids at the end of the day. 
When Kevin Cash became manager of the Tampa Bay Rays, assembling his staff was a top priority. Cash moved Tom Foley to the bench, opening up a spot at third base. The perfect candidate was just up the road in Durham, managing the Rays' AAA affiliate. In eight seasons with the Bulls, Charlie Montoya reveled in telling countless players the words they longed to hear. You're headed to the big leagues. In December of 2014, it was Montoya's turn to hear the good news. I went to the mall to get a present for my wife, and then I was talking to Joe Bench, our, our head trainer in the mountain leagues, and I remember talking to Joe, and I got the other call, and I said, this is Florida call. Let me answer it, just in case. I don't know who it is, but I'm gonna answer it. And then it was cash, and you know, it was a great call, and he was awesome. He called me twice that day to tell me, so how's it going, how you doing? You know, he, he's, a, he's a great man, as you guys know already. And so right away, I called my wife, and then okay, and then I called my dad, and. and I put them in speaker phone so they can both hear me at the same time. Being a AAA manager, uh, there's a lot to it. Um, it's a lot more than just managing games. You're talking about so many personalities of baseball players. You have the young prospects who are working their way up. You have the veterans who are sitting there waiting for their opportunity. And you have some guys who are there playing out their career because they like playing baseball and this is what they're doing, is their job. Uh, to be able to manage those personalities, to be able to manage the call-ups and the send-downs, it takes someone who uh, has, a, has a strong personality and someone uh, who has a flexible personality, and Charlie has shown that, and some of those same skills are really important at the major league level too. All right. Lo sacaba? No tiró? Got him sleeping. Knowing that we were going to bring Tom in from the bench, Charlie has the experience at third base and can kind of be that second infield coach and really help out from that aspect. But just the comfort level that he has with the staff, the organization, and then being at third base and knowing a lot of the players. Players like Evan Longoria, Chris Archer, Alex Cobb, Brandon Geyer, and Kevin Kiermeyer, just to name a few current Rays that Montoyo managed in the minors and who were happy to see him join them at the major league level. Charlie was a lot of fun to play for. He was, you know, one of those quote unquote players managers and knew how to handle his guys really well and he's just got a personality about him that you want to be around. It's awesome to see that all that time that he spent in the minor leagues winning and, and managing the way he's managed. On top of that, just being a great person to be around on the field. All that's kind of paid off and he's on the big league level. Just all, all the players that I'm here with now, they're all, they all play for me. And that, that's, that was the best thing just to get to this point, to be in the minor leagues for so long and then make, make it to the big leagues with the same team that give you a chance way back in Princeton. It doesn't get any better than that.